did hair do. He got a haircut. Snip, this is what snip. the kids did today. I can trust it. <laughs> so we are going to go on. And our guest is Patrick Bristow. And here, I'm going to show you. I made this little thing for us. So you can see who he is. Isn't that awesome? He's requesting to come on. So not, I think not, yet, not yet, not yet. So, two seconds, Patrick, two seconds. We're waiting for the fans. So we need, the base. So we, we're going to ask Patrick a few questions, and then we're going to play a game called Peeve or No Peeve. Very excited. And I'm hoping he has some memorabilia to show or share with everybody. Mm. But if, if not, it's totally fine. We asked some guests to show some memorabilia. Um, it's going to be good. We got some stuff. We got this guy. I don't know who this guy is. We got this guy, right and happy Friday, and may I be the first to wish you, from the Josh, from the, all of us here at the Joshua Tamer Show Productions, a happy Easter, happy Easter. upcoming, happy and a happy Passover. Passover. We hope that all viruses have passed over your house, and that your hair is better than mine. <laughs> I was not expecting to make an on-camera appearance today. Look at that. It's pretty, like, rocking. A rocket It's like, you just need a... Motorcycle. Man. Rock belly. I also have my sweatpants on. So Marcelo is going to see house. you guys. Nice to see you, Marcelo. Oh, um, hi, Naylor. Um, and Joshua. I saw him on Friends. Yeah, so did I. He was really great. Um, happy Friday. Happy Friday. You happy should... Friday, everybody. So without further ado, let's get our guests. We're going to get our guests. And remember, we're going to be just chatting with you guys at the end yes. of the guest oh, round. And then um, if you have any questions, just type it in. We'll ask. And also at the end of our show, if you would like to come on after we say goodbye to Patrick, we'll, we'll come on and we'll have some puppet chats. If you want to puppet chat with us, if you have a puppet, grab a puppet. Should I? Oh, hi. We can, we can have a little puppet hang. Puppet hang. That's right, we can. Are, Grandpa. All right, should I do his intro? Can I do the intro? Break it down. All right, Patrick, get ready. I'm going to do your intro. Then we're going to bring you in. Here we go, like a professional talk show. Hi, Tamara. Hi, I'm just going to Hi, everybody. Hi, guys. All right, here it is. Here's the bio. Ready? So, tonight, our amazing guest, we're very excited to have him. He appeared on numerous television shows and films over the past 30 years. Maybe you remember him as the wig master on Seinfeld, or as the goody two-shoe friend Peter on the groundbreaking sitcom Ellen. Maybe you've heard of that show. As well, he was also a recurring role on Mad About You. Mm -hmm. Curvy Enthusiasm, one of my all-time favorites. And more. In recent years, he has appeared on American Woman, Criminal Moz, Major Crimes, Shameless, The Middle, Last Man Standing, Pretty Little Liars, CSI, and the films Austin Powers, So I Married an Axe Murderer, Pain and Gain, and Transformers 4. Which I did not see. I did not know he was in that. I'll have to go drive and check it out. He'll also show up on the blah, 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 blah. But of course... <laughs> He's also an amazing comedian from the Groundlings Theater in Los Angeles, where he performed, taught, and directed for very many years. And he's also, you know, a Los Angeles resident in the area of Los Angeles area. And we all know him from his amazing work with the Jim Henson Company's long-running puppet improv show, Puppet Up Uncensored. And, come on, we all know him, and we all love him, from a little movie called Showgirls. Oh, yeah, kind of a giant, huge cult hit. Thank Let's you. bring him on already, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome our special guest. Patrick Bristow! Oh, so Let's see if we can get him. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say Patrick Bristow! Three, two, two one. one. Here he is. Technology <laughs> is working. Waiting, it says waiting for waiting, Patrick. Waiting, waiting, it's waiting. technology. Ladies, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Marcella says, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's connected. Hey! Hey! Hi! Hi, guys. We did it! I'm so excited well, to see you. I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see you. I'm and not and not to belittle that, but I'm excited to see anyone right now. Oh, uh, that's nice. How, how's, I guess you've been stuck in the house like the rest of the world, right? Yeah, just me, uh, my husband, and a Chihuahua. Oh yeah, what's your Chihuahua's name? So cute. That would be Dolores. Is Dolores perhaps going to make an appearance tonight? She probably will. <laughs> I, my favorite dog is. Sam was a big Chihuahua. Yes. Chihuahua fan. And guess what? I named my dog Elmo when I was younger. I had a Chihuahua named Elmo. Was that oh. related to? That was not related to me doing with puppets at all. But maybe it, it's, it's a full circle. Foreshadowing. Oh, coincidence then. Yes. Coincidence. Patrick, it's nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Well, sure. And I, I know I told you that I just recently found um, my original Showgirls script in a box of memorabilia. Ooh. Yeah. Organizing stuff, and now I can't find it. Oh, oh no. Well, how are you going to pay the bills now that there's quarantine? You can't go work. You're going to have to hock that script. I, well, seriously, don't think I didn't, you know, 
wonder, like, hey, what would this fetch on eBay? Because it's a pre-shoot draft. Wow. Oh, wow. You could yeah, probably so get, like, 1200 bucks for it. Yeah, if I get 12 bucks for it, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of organizing. But other than doing your show, what have you guys been doing with all this Well, time? you know, sadly, no organizing. We've been kind of busy. I've been homeschooling my children. Oh. And I've been, you know, taking naps. Yeah, <laughs> he's been taking naps. Got a Lots very naps. schedule. Very, yeah, full schedule. Very busy. You know, I've, been Nap catching, schedule. I've been catching up and drawing. I've been drawing a little bit and reading. So it's kind of like old school bringing it back to, like, when you're, like, living at home with your parents and you're yeah. like on board all right i'll just draw i'll just read yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of just like relaxing kind of. i helped you and the kids yeah. make some easter oh, eggs. I, I, I easter eggs that was nice oh uh, patrick eggs. first oh uh, patrick first yeah yeah i was excited because eggs were a hard commodity to get down here in the desert for a couple weeks i bet true N- and now like we you- can get you almost feel bad, like, decorating them and throwing them away or something, right? Because, like, food is so, like, important these days. Like, you right. never know. Well, I mean, are you going to throw them away or did you hard-boil them first? I hard-boiled them. We hard-boiled them away. But, you know, truth be told, <laughs> we buy for- the really <laughs> junky ones. We're not buying, like, organic eggs to, like, decorate. Although I do make most of my eggs out of dust masks, N95, surgical gloves, anything that's disposable. You know, anything I have lying around the house. That nobody seems to need these you, days. You, actually, you might want to think rethink that because uh, those masks are very, um, very coveted by medical professionals who uh, need them. Yes, True. yes. Sorry. Correct. True. Correct. That's why yeah. everyone's outside. Do you, hey, let me ask you something. Are people banging pots and pans at in the neighborhood at seven day? o'clock every night? Not where we are, because like the, you know, the nearest neighbors are like a hundred yards, and then it's, <laughs> I'm, it, I'm really kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you're like in the perfect spot. Behind. What's that? Like, you're like in the perfect spot for a pandemic. Yeah. If there kind is a of, perfect spot. Kind of, but then when I do have to go out, uh, some of the people aren't taking it very seriously, and uh. it, they're maskless and coughing, and oh I, my I, god, what are you doing? Sorry. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. They're coughing and maskless. That's crazy. It's terrible. Oh, what? and I have, I do have an old ninety um N95 mask that we couldn't have donated to anyone because it had been used for um, home remodeling purposes and stuff yeah. like that. But boy, do you get a dirty look when you wear that out on the street. Really? Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. You kind of have to. I, I yeah. my, it's funny because my uh, some of the people in my retirement community they wear the N95 and then they put like a shawl over it to to hide oh, that-, that they're wearing it. Yeah, mask shame. Yeah, mask shame. Mask shame. You know, first yeah. world problems, what have you. Uh, uh, sometimes my, my camera we, just flips. So every Sorry. time we hit, yeah, I, the button. I like your dresser. <laughs> that's yeah. That's our TV art <laughs> more. Yeah, um, so what have you been more? watching? Any binge watching Netflix that are any any shows that you're? Been yeah, how are you keeping about? yourself entertained over there? Yeah, well, of course, you know. I mean, I, I watched Tiger King, right? Um, yeah. Very depressing. You know, when when you get beyond the kind of camp great gardens of it just like great gardens then it gets right. really, it's really sad um but then i watched um something called uh, the bonfire of destiny and it's a french series limited series it takes place like the 1870s in paris it's uh-huh. very, very soap opera is that yeah. on netflix i need a recommendation yeah. is that maybe, we'll, maybe we'll yeah. watch it later yeah um then i watched one of us which i think that was the name of the documentary about the um, williamsburg in new york with the um, Hasidic Jew, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Very interesting. That um, stuff's intense. Yeah, it is, actually. Um, but so is Bonfire of Destiny, because there's a big conflagration, a big fire at a charity bazaar in the beginning. Oh, wow. Oh, crazy. Oh. You know, it's funny, because I, I, I really like the docudrama series. I do, too. But I couldn't hang with Tiger King. Yeah, I had to stop I watched it. one episode, I was like, you know what? I can't invest any more time in this, because I already know... How terribly tragic this is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Which it yeah. was. And the real story is even more terribly tragic. Um, oh, that, that's the thing. is like when you get past that kind of like initial, you know, ridicule, guilty pleasure thing, it's like, yeah, these are lives being destroyed. Destroyed. Yeah. And now yeah. Not, there's, a, there's a new TikTok trend right now where they all make fun of. What was the lady who, who had her husband killed? I heard, she's <laughs> famous now. I can't remember her name, though. So I know. I didn't remember either. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know what? We, we have a whole bunch of questions for you, but we got we have some viewer some questions, questions for you real quick. Jaylen oh, okay, Coppola yeah. says, on Larry David, learning those dance steps for Curb, is he, re- is he really coordinated as hell in real life? Oh, are you really coordinated as hell in real life? I don't... Wait, you mean Larry David? Is he... Yeah, I guess from... No, I I guess sound, from, it seems like he means you. 
Well, I'll answer both. Yes. Are you <laughs> and was he? Larry, absolutely not. I would be very <laughs> because he he was. I made up those steps that I did. Um, they told me make up something that's going to be hard for him to follow. And that went, was okay. awesome. That's awesome. It was awesome. Your steps were so quick. Just quick pod berets. Um, my mother was a ballet teacher, so I, you know, had a lot of dance training, even right. though I didn't get in showgirls. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I just, you know, I just did something kind of stupid again, like just these high speed pod berets, real quick. It was so great. Awesome. It was hilarious. Well, I ended up with this, the choreographer for the producers. I'm like, oh, do I get like a watch, you know, for research or anything? And they go, no, just make something up. And I thought, oh, God. This it is. Was- <laughs> The real choreographer of the producers must have seen that and said, what the hell's going on there? It was so fast. It was Crazy. so perfect. It was hilarious. Yay, thank you. And, I, I, and uh, I love when you were like, just like, I think we just need to take a five. Like, you were just like getting pissed off at him. I love that. that oh, that good, moment. good. Yeah. And we have another question. We have another question. Yeah. Nailer17 said, what's your favorite movie? Oh, yeah, good one. Of all okay, time. All this time. Is, this is going to come out of left field. Go and for I'm, it. People are going to come at me for this. It's um, Day of the Locust from Day the 70s. Day of the Locust. Oh, okay. So obscure Very that obscure. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> what what, what it, year was that? Like 74, I think. And who who's in it? Karen Black. Um, uh, God, I can't remember anyone's names. I should be taking notes. Wait, Day of the Locust? <laughs> Day of the Locust. Oh, um, Donald Sutherland. Is oh, it? I, I'm assuming it's not a comedy. Oh, by no means. Oh. <laughs> Oh no! It's early, it's early '30s Hollywood decadence and destruction. Like a noir type thing. You know, it not not exactly, um, but definitely kind of the seedy underbelly of early '30s Hollywood. Right. And that sounds. Uh, all, I think I might have to see that now. I'm really intrigued. It's very long. I would say it's probably flawed. I'm sure <laughs> if anyone teaches it in uh, film school, they probably go, "Here's an example of what not to do." <laughs> That's cool, though. <laughs> But those stuff. are fun. Those are fun. Yeah, but there's so many things about it that are really, really good. Um, and I, I think I just, um, I, I just, I, I love the darkness of it and the, the, yeah, the, and the fact that Hollywood really hasn't changed. It's just learned, learned how to hide it better. True. Right. That's funny. Um, I gotta check it out now. Yeah, me too. I'm an uplifted so, cast, aren't I? I'll... It's funny because when you ask someone their favorite, <laughs> no. well, no, when you ask someone your favorite movie, you always think they're gonna say something like, you know. Jaws, Star Wars. But that's great. It's you know, great. but like you're, you're that's a, that means that shows you have true taste. Yes. And an actual, you know, ability to like discern crap from you know other kind of sure. crap. I right. guess. Or, uh, or I know what kind of crap I like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, at least you no, know, at least you're being true to yourself, and that's the most important thing. All right, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, have a question. So okay, so so tell me everything, because because I'm older than most of our viewing mm-hmm. audience, yes, okay? Because I'm in my seventies, so I was watch, I've been watching TV for a long since it, time. Since it began. Yes, since it began. A lot of our viewers, you know, they're in a different kind of demographic. So I was hoping that maybe we could educate them yes. a little bit by going back in your bio just a touch just a and you're telling me everything I need to know <laughs> about Peter Barnes and your experience on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And I guess my biggest question is not only tell me about that experience, but also have you seen game of games? Oh, yeah. And is Ellen like a cruel person? Because on that show, she's like dunking people in tanks and slime she's all the time. That. She's and she's like really that. enjoying being mean. And I always thought that she was like a nice person. So like, I've never met her. So, What's your take on Elle? Is she like a meanie in private or what? <laughs> she was never mean to me. Um, well, that's good. She, in fact, she never really dunked nice. you in a tank of goo? No. <laughs> no. Have you seen that show? What's that? Have you seen her current game show? No, I haven't seen this one. Oh, I mean, it's totally nuts. To it. It's game all prank based, right? She's dunking people in, in tubs of goo and throwing pies at their face. And then, like, there's, crazy. there's, there's like, this one, like, rodeo thing where you, like, blast, like, a, like, yeah, a it's ball not, and then they throw you off the rodeo. It's, it's lighthearted, but well, terribly a, mean at the I same see, there's time. There's a lot of contracts that have to be signed. You, gotta, you know the lady. you got to check it out. It's funny. Like, watch it later. Okay, I, I have a lot of time on my hands. I will definitely check <laughs> it out. Please do. But it sounds to me like it's, like, you know, a cross between Nickelodeon sliming people, classic yeah. pie face, but with you know, with uh, that kind of mischievous thing that I've seen her do on her show, where she scares people. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, I never, I never caught, I never caught a mean vibe from her at all. Um, I, I also was uh, really lucky. Uh, he's frozen. Thing. Oh, he's back. He's back. Hello. Hi. You're back, and he's back. Uh, thank you, Time Warner Cable. It's probably <laughs> my... yeah, right. 
That was an anti-advertisement. Yes, I see. <laughs>